I can't quite believe that I've had this car nine months. <laughs> I don't know where time has gone. I've covered in the region of 6,000 miles, albeit best part of 3,000 miles of those was done in the first 10 days of ownership when I took it to the Pyrenees and the Alps. And I'm conscious that I've never really done a review of the car and I've never really done an update. I've done a few videos around the tour and when I took it on track, but I thought it might be interesting just to walk around the car and give you my thoughts of ownership after nine months. First up, I absolutely love the car and I'm trying so hard not to be that guy that's worried about mileage and depreciation costs and running costs and driving it in bad conditions and road salt and all those things. I know this car is a car to be driven, but there's also an element of me. It was a very expensive car. If you didn't see my collection video, I paid around 62,000 pounds for this car, double what I've ever paid for a car in my life. It's on finance. We'll talk more about that in a moment as well. So there are things that I want to bear in mind, but let's have a bit of a walk around the car and talk about some of the things that I've found about the car. I've done a few things to it in terms of modifications as well. Let's start off with the front end. Now, when I bought the car, I knew I was going to be doing some drive tours and spirited driving and track days, and I wanted to protect the paint as much as possible. And I was very keen to have paint protection film installed. And I went to my good friends at Fresh Layers and they did an amazing job. I decided not to have the whole car PPF because that's quite an expensive thing to do. You're looking at, I mean, it varies from car to car, but for this car, it was going to be somewhere in the region of kind of £4,000. So I had what's called a track pack, which is basically the whole front end of the car, the side sills, a little bit around the rear arches. And actually, we had a bit of PPF left over for the rear spoiler but the PPF's holding up really, really well. And actually, there are bits on the car, especially just in front of the rear wheels, where you get the stones flicking up or rubber flicking up on a track day, and you can see that the PPF's done its job. Um, and if the PPF hadn't have been there, then the paint would have paid the price with chips and marks and so on. So front end, the PPF's held, holding up really, really well. And I've had a couple of incidents with the car, some scratches and those types of things where had the PPF not been on the car, uh, I would have ended up having some issues with paintwork. So I can't recommend highly enough, if you're getting a car that's got good paint and it's an expensive car, PPF, although it's an expensive thing at the time, I mean, again, the track pack for this car was about 2,000 pounds, it's a lot of money but it's well worth it in my opinion, just to protect the paintwork. And then the other thing I've done at the front of the car, again, it's a protection thing really, is um, from factory, the front end of the car, these areas here are completely open with the radiators behind and I fitted Zunsport grills on the front. Again, there's a fitting video on the channel. And I'm firstly, I think these look fantastic um, and they give the front end of the car a little bit more protection. I think I mentioned in the video, there is some question as to whether or not Porsche have a sense of humor failure when you fit these and invalidate your warranty. I find that really difficult to get my head around. And I know that Porsche just like you to keep the car as it came from factory. But if you look at something like a GT3 or a GT4, they have grills already fitted to them that look exactly like that. And for me, I'm actually doing my car a favor by protecting my radiators behind by fitting these grills. Um, I guess you can always take them off when you take it in for a service, but I'm really pleased with the way that these have been fitted. Again, I'll put a link in the description below if you're interested in the, the grills. Loads of people were and, and took me up on my, uh, my offer with Zunsport, so very, very pleased with those. The other thing I've done for the car is around the back. Now, when I first went to see this car at Harbour Cars, I only went to just have a look at a GTS to see what the spec was like and see what they were like to sit in and those types of things. I had no intention of buying one at that point and I just fell in love with the car. And there are a few things that really made me fall in love with it. One of them was these two kind of rear diffuser panels being in body colour because on most Boxsters and Caymans, these are black and the kind of whole diffuser just melds into a, a, a black area. I love the way that these stand out and it's not a massively common option i've not seen many cars with that on which i really like 
I think um, <laughs> I set the internet on fire with my number plate being a slightly different shape. Lots of you absolutely hate it. I really, really like it. And I love the fact I can get my little UK sticker on there rather than having to have a massive, great big sticker somewhere else on the car. But the main thing I've done around the back of the car um, was not long after I got back from my drive tour, I went up to the guys at Miltech uh, and we put a Miltech uh, exhaust system on it. So it's an OPF back, basically straight through for OPF back. And I am so happy with the exhaust. And it's one of the things I haven't talked about a great deal on my videos. It's got a really deep, bassy rumble. It's not obnoxious at all. Um, the car, even with the stock Porsche sports exhaust, every now and again you get a sort of a whip crack and a, and a few, few pops and bangs on downshift and so on. Nothing too horribly shouty. This is, if anything, a little bit more subtle, but when you start the car and when you rev it, it just sounds wicked. Listen to this. So yeah, very, very pleased with the exhaust. Now, there are a few things I want to do to the car. One of them is on the outside. We'll talk about that, then we'll jump on the inside and talk to you about some of the things I found out on the inside of the car when you're driving. So the car came shod with Pirelli P0 tires and I've not got anything against the tire, but I really wanted to have Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires on the car. For me, for the kind of driving I'm doing, I wouldn't go as far as having Cup 2s because although I track the car every now and again, I don't do that much track driving. And I think PS4S for road and a bit of track is just such a good tire. So the plan was to change them out quite quickly after I'd done my drive tour. The challenge I had, and I covered this on another video when I talked about insurance and so on, is on the way back from the Pyrenees and Alps drive tour, uh, we hit a rock and blew out the front left tire um, and we're basically stuck in France. The company that we got recovered to were having huge problems sourcing a tire and they were being quite difficult about things. They would only, they were gonna basically re replace a pair. They wouldn't just do one tire. So they wanted the same tire on, on the front axle. And I said, well, okay, if you're gonna do that, can you get me a set of Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires for the front axle? I know I've got Pirelli P0s on the back, but when I get back, I'm gonna, I'm gonna change them anyway. And we kind of had a broken conversation, me with a bit of my bad French, them with a bit of bad English. And I went back to my hotel in Cannes to wait for them to source the tires. Went back the next day and they'd fitted a set of Pirellis. Um, <laughs> and then I got the bill. <laughs> um, are you sitting down? The two front tires on this car cost me a thousand euros, 500 euros each. They often saw, must have seen my passport and went, ah, le roast beef, we will, uh, we will make him pay. Um, and yeah, they made me pay a thousand euros. So that made me think, well, maybe I won't change the tires out straight away. I'll get as much money as I can, or you know, as much use for that money as possible. Um, now the rears, um, they're, they're, they're not finished by any means, but I can just start to feel I, I'd like a, a new set of rears anyway, and, and therefore I am gonna change the tires out. Uh, and I've got a drive tour coming up at the end of April, which I'll tell you about in a moment. Uh, and, and I'd quite like to, by the time I do the drive tour, to have Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires on the car. But yes, that's my tale of woe of having a puncture in the middle of nowhere in the south of France. Anyway, let's jump inside the car because it is pretty cold. Although I might actually drop the roof because well, that gives you a better view on the inside. And then I'll tell you about the inside. And also I want to tell you about this drive tour because it's going to be awesome. I love being able to drop the roof with the key. The character of the car changes so much. Actually with the roof up, it feels very much like uh, a tin top car, but then you drop the roof and it's just that exposure to the elements that I absolutely love and the reason why I have a convertible, to be fair. Now the inside of this car for me is very special. It's the other thing that made me have to have it and not just go and have a look at the car and go and find one somewhere else. The GTS interior pack in this car makes it so special 
Um, there's a lot of Alcantara. The seats are beautifully trimmed. They've got the GTS insignia. They've got, they've got a lot of carbon fiber trim along the dash on the center part of the console here, Alcantara on the steering wheel. It's just such a lovely place to be. Very, very comfortable. When I bought the car, I had this debate as to whether I go manual or automatic. I've done quite a few manual driver's car videos recently and raved about how much I love a manual car. And yet my own personal car has a PDK twin clutch, but it is a stunning gearbox. It makes the car super easy to drive in just normal auto when you're on a, on a, you know, a more relaxed drive. But when you want to get more engaged, you can go into manual override, you can use the paddles on a track. It's stunning on a track. So yeah, I'm so, so pleased with um, how um, the car has delivered all of the things I wanted it to. Uh, I mentioned before about the, the cost and the financing and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm quite keen for people to understand that, you know, that there's a, an image, I think, portrayed by some YouTubers naming no names that, you know, you see them swapping out of supercars every three to four months and buying, you know, multiple cars at a time. And it just makes it look like that's a normal thing to do. And it, it just really isn't. Um, and when I bought this car, £62,000 was just a massive amount of money. And I thought long and hard about how I did it. And, you know, I, um, I've talked about um, my finance partner Lillian Stanley Finance helped me get the numbers together so that I could get the car. And I'm actually going to do a separate video on the financing aspects of this car, so stay tuned to the channel. But I am going on a drive tour, so um, I'm going to be teaming up with Podium Tours. So I've done quite a few bits of uh, work recently at Podium Place in Newbury, uh, and, and that's going to continue throughout the year. I've got some super exciting projects with those guys. But they have started a tour company where they do drive tours called Podium Tours. And on the 28th of April to the 1st of May, I'm going on a Podium Tours tour. Now, there's still spaces. So if you want to come along, I'll put all the details below. Um, then have a look on the, uh, the link that I'll send you that will take you to the website. It's a super exciting tour. So basically, we go from Podium Place in Newbury. We're going to drive to Belgium. Um, we're going to go go-karting at the end of the first day and then the next day we're going to see the world endurance cars at spa the six hours at spa when that race is finished we're then going to drive to luxembourg overnight in luxembourg and then the next day we're going to drive to the nurburgring to the norscheif um, we're hopefully going to do some high speed autobahn runs so i'm going to be taking um, Lady P, it'd be great to see how fast she goes on an autobahn. And then we're going to go to the Norshife. I don't know whether I'm going to be brave enough to take her on the Norshife. I've never driven the Norshife before. Uh, I might get a ring taxi or something like that just to have my first lap, but it's going to be a super tour. I've got a few people I know coming along. So if you are interested, I'll put all the details below. Um, it's, uh, it's going to be a huge amount of fun. But Let's head out onto the roads for a bit of a drive, talk a little bit about the driving experience of the car and what I've learned in the time since I've had it. But yeah, interior wise, I am so chuffed. Now then, spring forward a couple of days. The weather still is horrible, but it's not raining, so the roof is down. And I guess that's the first thing is the vast majority of the miles I've done in this car have been with the roof down. The major exception is probably coming back through France after the drive tour. When you're sat on the auto route at 140 k's an hour, it's much, much nicer with the roof up. But most of the miles I've done in the car have been with the roof down. Drive mode wise, um, the O, I guess that's ordinary. The only time I really drive the car in that is on the motorway because what it tends to do is it favours the higher gears and it drops the car all the way up into seventh gear and it's really great for cruising. But on a normal bit of driving like this, I'm pretty much always in sport. Now, when I change it into sport, the exhaust tone does change a little bit, but that Miltec system doesn't have a valve on it. So it's open all the time, but it's not proved to be droney or too offensive at all, even though there's no, if you like, valve to turn it off. In sport mode, when you've got the Porsche exhaust on, the valve opens and the little noisy exhaust button light comes on. It does make a difference in this, but I think that's much more to do with the mappings and so on. 
So in sport mode, it's a really nice responsive car. If I'm driving it in auto, it will normally be in sport mode. I did all of my masters driving in sport mode and I know the gears that the car's in for the relative speeds and so on. If you go up into Sport Plus, you can hear that change straight away and it, it favours the higher gears, it holds it in a higher gear, it's now holding me in third gear. I'm going to come into this 30 and come down and it's changed down into second for me to do 30 miles an hour through the 30 zone. Sport Plus mode also stiffens up the suspension, this car's got the PASM suspension and I just find that actually Sport Plus mode is a little bit too much, the suspension doesn't need to be that firm and if you're wanting the car to change gear on its own it just holds gears far far too much. So let me just drop that back into Sport mode while we go through this 30 and it's just gone up into third gear, that is the gear I need to be in to go through this 30 mile an hour zone. The mode that I use when I want to have some fun is I've set up an individual mode and what that's basically done is it turns everything to the max except the suspension so it, I leave the PASM in the softest setting and then when I'm in I, I generally go into manual override and I change gears on the paddle. So I only really put it in I mode when I want to manually change. If I want the car to change for me I keep it in sport. And those, that, that mode, the, the, the way I drive, that's pretty much what I've learned in my time with the car. Now, let's go and find another piece of road because I want to talk to you about this flat four as opposed to the flat six that came in the previous generation Boxster. And whenever you do a review of a Boxster or Cayman 718, people will always get in the comments and go, uh, but it's not got a flat six. Okay, so keeping an eye out of potholes, I'm going to put it into I mode. You can hear the exhaust tone change. I'm going to drop into manual override and... What I love about the flat four in the 718 is it's so torquey. Now I'm not going to say that a flat four is better or worse than a flat six because they're both so completely different and if you saw my GT4 RS review I mean that's probably one of the best sounding flat sixes there is on the road right now an absolutely sensational thing but this this flat four it's just got now hopefully you can just hear the rumble I haven't really done a spirited driving a spirited driving video with the Miltec exhaust in it and it's just got this rumbly burble to it. I absolutely love it. It's not too Subaru. It's still Porsche but it's just bassy and deep and I absolutely love it. Yeah, the, the flat four for me in this car is a brilliant, brilliant unit to drive. Now what I would love to do, and let me know in the comments below if this is something you'd be interested in, I would love to do a side-by-side -side comparison of this two and a half litre flat four GTS versus the new four litre flat six GTS, because you can't buy this GTS anymore. So I might have a chat with my good friends at Porsche GB and see if I can borrow a four litre GTS Boxster to do a comparison. I'm not so sure I'd have overtaken there, but never mind. Absolutely lovely classic Mini in front, although it's the not the classic classic Mini, it's the last of the old Minis, but still very cool. So hopefully not too much is going to turn left here, and I'm going to be able to just have a little bit of fun. Listen for the change down. Rumbly, burbly. Here we go. As I said, we've just got, it's a little bit cold and a little bit. The power delivery is so smooth and so linear, the changes on the PDK are so slick. It's such a good gearbox. I get bored of hearing myself say how great the PDK is every time I drive a Porsche. 
and I know Porsche make magnificent manual boxes but honestly for the the type of driving I do in this car the PDK is just wonderful and it's so rapid this car on drive tours you can keep up with the best of them I never want for any more power it's got plenty and it means that you can drive it relatively spiritedly down an A or a B road without getting into too much trouble. It's got a beautiful front end, loads of power, loads of torque coming out. This is, this is why I bought the car, to enjoy a road like this. It's not the nicest of weather, it's a bit cold, but I've got the roof down and it's just mega, absolutely mega. Brakes are really good. Oh, and then, So much traction. There you go. So I think it's safe to say, I love this car. I really, really do. I can't wait to get it on our podium tours, tour up to Spa and the North Shife. I can't wait to see what I can get it up to on an unrestricted autobahn. But yeah, there you go. Nine months of ownership and I'm still a very, very happy boy. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Comments below are always welcome. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Petroped for plenty more content to come. I hope to film more stuff with Lady P this year. But the next thing, she needs some new tires, then we take her on tour. That sounds like a good plan. I'll see you on the next film, guys. You take care. Drive safe.